What's going on everybody? Right now I am filming on the Canon EOS RP. Let's see how it does when we take it around the city, does it? Oh, ah, it's so bright. Is that the sun I've heard so much about? The dogs are loving it. They always just hang out right here and just soak in all the sun. Los Angeles has actually been like really wet this winter, like a lot more rain than usual. I probably should have thrown this on the tender, but let's see, hopefully it still runs. <laughs> Oh, I miss you. Mm. Let me just start off by saying this. I myself would never ever buy this camera. That's why I've convinced a friend to buy it so he can deal with the regret. And the reason is very simple. It's because there is no 24 frames per second, which is what I like to shoot in in HD, which is a really, really weird thing for them to exclude. And obviously they're doing it so that more people would buy the more expensive cameras like the EOS R. But keep in mind that I am a filmmaker that almost exclusively shoots video and I dab a little bit in photography, primarily just for Instagram. So I obviously care a lot more about the video functionalities of the camera. So with that in mind, again, I wouldn't touch this camera. That could change. It's kind of like this lighting that just changed on me. There's a cloud. Ooh, at least I got more diffusion on my face now. Before I go much further, check the description because if they do release a firmware update for this, then I will include it in the description and that kind of changes a lot of things. It's just so dumb that that's what they decided to cut out because obviously the camera is totally capable of doing 24 frames per second. It's not really a hardware thing at this point. So I wouldn't be too surprised if people figured out how to hack the RP just to get that 24 in there like Magic Lantern. But as of right now, I'm shooting in 25 frames per second. Man, this lighting keeps changing on me. Now the reason why 25 frames per second exists in this camera is because there's two standards for video. There's NTSC and there's PAL. Depending on where you live, you're gonna have different standards. So here in the US, we're NTSC, so we go with 24 frames per second or 30. But PAL uses 25, so you can actually switch this camera over to PAL mode and then access 25 frames per second. But enough babbling, let's take it for a spin. Let's go. Sam's got the EOS RP on slow motion and he's gonna make me look really cool while I get ready. <laughs> The you higher the pinky, the fancier you are. That's one high pinky. You excited for escargot? I have no idea what that is. Is that like a French car? <laughs> yeah, it's like a French car. I feel very inadequate here. It's very fancy. Everyone else is wearing like mustaches and stuff. <laughs> it smells pretty good. And it looks pretty good too. I think this you use this to pick it up. These are some massive snails. Eat it. That's actually really bomb. Are you lying to me? Or are you just gonna be like, oh, no. it's really good, and then I'm gonna try it? No, dude, this is crash. actually really good. <laughs> Tastes like a pizza pocket. Aside from the fact that it doesn't have 24 frames per second, it reminds me a whole lot of the EOS R. Sam's about to get another tattoo. Yeah, I always get a little bit nervous just because of the pain. Like, it, it hurts for like a little bit, and then your body's like, okay, I guess you're cool with this. It's going right here in between my Jason and my Lotus, like this area. All right, so now let's take a close look at this 4K shot of Sam trying his best not to cry. It's pretty much right up there in terms of sharpness with the EOS R. Of course, the EOS R still has an advantage by having C-Log and higher codecs. Deal breaker for the RP is that there is no dual pixel autofocus in 4K. So basically, if good autofocus is important to you, then don't even touch that 4K mode. If you're trying to use the 4K autofocus regularly, you're gonna hit some serious roadblocks. And of course, just like the EOS R, when you do go into 4K mode, there is a crop. But if you're willing to do that manual focus, it's definitely not terrible. Oh my God, I'm out of focus for this whole thing. See, useless. So I just switched the camera from 4K to HD. So when you're filming yourself like this and you plan on moving around a little bit, this is probably the mode you're gonna wanna do. We get that dual pixel autofocus back, so we're nice and sharp. Aside from the fact that there's no 24, ugh, the HD out of it is actually pretty solid. Quality is right there neck and neck, and even in low light, they're pretty comparable. Beauty of full frame sensor, including the RPs. You could bump that ISO way up there, all the way up to 12,800, which is insane, by the way. It doesn't look beautiful, a lot of noise, but hey, you can still see, so that's pretty amazing. So if you're 100% sure that you don't need 24 frames per second and you're just gonna shoot everything in 30, then you are getting a pretty good value out of this because you're essentially getting very, very similar HD out of this camera, but just at a much lower price point. And there's other weird things like this EFS lens, which is for crop sensored cameras. If 
I put this on the EOS R, yeah, it fits on there, but you can't shoot full HD. You could shoot 4K or you could shoot 720p, but you can't shoot 1080p. Just weird limitations that doesn't really make sense. All right, so let's circle back to shooting 25 frames per second. And it looks so similar to 24. I personally can't tell the difference. It looks really good and can definitely look cinematic. It's only off by one frame per second. So I'm shooting in 25 frames per second. I switched my other cameras to 25. I edited in 25 and I uploaded to YouTube, which accepts 25. So the whole pipeline actually kind of works. But the issue really comes in at different workflow scenarios. Sure, you could take this 25 frames per second and just edit it in a 24 frame per second timeline, but there's a few issues there because you have that extra frame. Every second, it's just gonna ditch a frame. So usually you can't really notice. So here, I'll just cut out a couple of frames here and there right now. There's few frames being cut. And sometimes you can catch it, but sometimes you can't. It's like, did it happen? Did it not? Most of the time it just goes over people's heads. So they don't even know that they saw a glitch, but sometimes, especially if you're doing like a dolly or gimbal shot where there's smooth movement, it's gonna just interrupt that a little bit. Every second, just so some people might be like, it doesn't bother me too much. Some people would be like, I can't stand it. You could also interpret the footage as 24 frames per second, which would essentially just be slowing down the footage by a few percent. So I'll try that right now. So now this footage is being interpreted at 24 frames per second. And it might not be very obvious, but I'm in slightly, slightly slow motion right now. The most obvious giveaway is usually my voice. It does sound a little bit slower because it's like, whoa, slowing it down. You could just adjust just that. Pitch a little bit. So yeah, there are workarounds, but it's just one of those things like, why are we even dealing with this issue? But again, this is from my perspective from someone in the United States. But if you live somewhere where PAL is your standard, then congratulations. Most of the stuff that I've been complaining about doesn't really apply to you. So lucky you. Honestly, I would rather just shoot on an M50 with a speed booster. And I did a whole comparison video with this against the EOS R. So you can check that out. I'm definitely not saying you can't get cinematic footage out of this camera. You definitely can. There's just a few weird loopholes you have to jump through. Now, after all this complaining I've been doing, who is this camera good for? And I would actually say if I was getting into photography and I was like, I just want to get some really nice looking professional photography and I have about like a $2,000 budget, I would probably actually get this for 1300 bucks and spend the rest of the budget on a couple of prime lenses. And you could really do a lot with the still aspect of this. Now I do all my photo editing in Adobe Photoshop. And as of right now, they haven't released the software that allows me to open up the RP raw format. So I've had to do the editing off of Canon software. I think it's called Digital Photo Professional. It's free off their website. So I've been playing with the RP's photos on there and you could definitely push the images pretty far. You know, the R still has that higher megapixel count and I do feel like I can still push the images a little bit more. But again, that's to be expected because this EOS R is a thousand dollars more than the RP and the photos out of the R themselves are insane. Sometimes I feel like I'm just cheating because I'll just take a very average photo and then in Photoshop, I can really bring out all the details. So the EOS R still has its advantages in the photo world, but the RP definitely is to the point where I'd be pretty happy with it. I'm going to switch the EOS R real quick so I can actually show you the body. And here we go. This is the EOS RP. I've been taking it around like this. We got our mic jack and our headphone jack and an HDMI out. But I did notice that when I plug that HDMI port into here, it shuts off the LCD on the back, which might affect some of you guys. Like right now I have the EOS R with a little flip screen and I like it because I can always just tap that little screen in case I need to focus on something. But I can also give myself a little signal over to here so I can generally see up close on a bigger screen what I'm doing. Also the RP does not come with that cool little thing that protects the sensor that the R does. Apparently for some early buyers, it comes with this little extension grip and a lens mount for free. I don't know exactly how long that offer is gonna last, but if you're gonna have the RP, definitely need an EF mount adapter because there's just not that many RF lenses out yet. Battery life on this guy, not great. This is about 7.5 watt hours. You're definitely gonna need to keep a couple on you. It is really small and it's pretty comfortable actually. And I don't actually feel like I need that bottom grip on here. I would actually take it just like this. And we're talking just a little bit bigger than that Canon M50. The grip was kind of useful a couple times when I put it on a gimbal because the lens itself will actually protrude past the bottom of this. So if you put it on a flat surface or try to mount it on a tripod plate, it'll actually rub against the lens. So by extending it out a little bit, it is easier to mount onto other things. The LCD display on the back here is noticeably not as good as the one on the R. Kind of minor, but again, noticeable. You have your different modes. I got my aperture program back here, my shutter right up here, and enough buttons to 
where I can feel pretty comfortable with it. And of course, the most significant thing about this is that it's $1,300 for a full frame camera. So if photography is your primary focus and you might just once in a while dabble in video, kind of the opposite of what I do, then this kind of becomes a very serious option to look at because this is definitely very, very capable of a camera. Whoa, that is dark. Maybe black wasn't the best color. <laughs> so you look cooler because you got the tattoos. It kind of fits your vibe, but I'm too dorky and goofy. It doesn't work for me. I'm telling you, you need a choker. You need eyeliner. You look great. <laughs> we'll do a little mohawk. Maybe we should put the orange back up. <laughs> bring up the exposure in the back a little bit. Hey, there we go. With just the slash, it looks kind of dark and morbid. Boop, now it's all bright and happy. It's much darker than my other colors, but it's kind of cool. I could always just bring up that backlight, brighten things up. Whenever I'm talking about something like happy, I'd be like, hey guys, and then I'll just like start talking about something really serious so it'll get kind of nice and dark. It actually looks pretty cool. Here, maybe with this lighter colored shirt, it might look a little less gothic. I don't know, how's it look? What do you guys think? Should I have gotten a brighter shade of purple? It's funny how different the mood is as soon as I changed the color of that piece of paper. Let's see what people are saying in the comments. My last video was a video sponsored by Sennheiser and there is a giveaway that's still up for grabs. Brand new G4 lavalier set with an XLR transmitter, pretty cool stuff. Top comment was from Flyby Francis. Potato Jet is gonna be casted in Crazy Rich Asians too with all the money he's making off all these sponsorships. <laughs> Heck yeah, I will, except for it'll probably be more like crazy, mildly successful Asian. Instead of us throwing extravagant parties, it'll be like me going to Whole Foods and then like, buying the organic spinach, it'd be crazy. I'm just kidding, Whole Foods is way too expensive for my blood. <laughs> I still always look for the cheapest wine. Like if a bottle of wine is like three bucks, I'm like, that's my shit. Timothy says that mic is so small, I could put it up my nose and hear my thoughts. Let me out, I'm stuck, help, somebody help. All those haters that clicked the dislike button must have meant this I like. That's what I tell myself all the time. Connor says, glad to hear Potato Jet is still employed. He was starting to upload so often, I was wondering if he got fired and was trying to do YouTube full time. I can't believe people hire me still either. But it is true, I have been focusing more on YouTube. I still like doing my production commercial work, but at the same time, YouTube is just so much more flexible. And I love how I could just shoot and I could literally upload whatever I want. I don't have to like go through an approval process and do something that I do is really cool and then have someone say oh let's change that i don't like that this is definitely not for all clients but when that happens it's just like your soul just gets sucked out of the project and that's the beauty of youtube it's just like no one's ever allowed to tell you hey change that but that's why i'm allowed to stick lavaliers in my nose that would never fly anywhere else sebastian says why haven't you made a galaxy s10 versus red airy video yet well i literally just got this package like 10 15 minutes ago so i'll get started i'll see you guys later If you have a girlfriend, can you get a lap dance at a bachelor party? Corn dog. <laughs>